Hi, it's Nick S. Welcome back to my channel, the CD Man channel. And today is the video of what I've been purchasing on New Music Finds for Wednesday, September 15th, 2022. Now, I'll give you a fair warning. Next week's video is going to be kind of long as there are 20 to 30 new titles that I bought for new releases next week. It very rarely happens that way, but there's a lot of new stuff next week. But for this week, let's see what we got. There'll be um, a slew of records that I got at a record store called Book Off in Manhattan, which I, which if you've seen my previous video, well, I already showed them, but I'll show them in this video again. I got some of the remnants of the last of the CTI Records recordings. There'll be a few more left, but not that many. Uh, two number one albums that I finally managed to get my hands upon. And some new releases, among others, and some chart stuff. So let's start off with two of those two number one albums that I managed to get my hands on. The first one was from, let me get the year in here. First one was from 2021. And I don't know if this is an official or a bootleg, but I would believe there was an official for this album. I'm not positive. I know the deluxe edition only was available digitally. So I know this one, was, this one is not the deluxe edition. And that is Young Stoner Life Presents Slime Language 2. It's a rap album. Young Thug had something to do with this album. Gunna had something to do with this album. And, no, well, it's not my favorite album in the world. It is a good album. I'm not going to say anything. Second album had to be on vinyl. Now, in getting the bootleg version of this album that I originally bought on CD, the album was over 80 minutes. Songs were cut. Songs were missing. Very unhappy with that. I took uh, the album that I got on CD and added the dig some digital stuff where I needed to to make a copy for my iPod or phone or whatever you call it again. However... I, did, I managed to get a vinyl copy. Don't know what condition it's in. Hopefully it's in decent enough condition. But I managed to get a vinyl. Now, Amazon had said years ago this was coming out on CD. Never did. And I was very disappointed with this. And I'm giving my gold star thumbs down award to this artist because the last two albums he put out, Honestly Maybe and... Um, I'm not going to remember the name of the last album. Uh, and um, the other album, the double album, did not come out on CD. And the double album was horrible because it was hard. You couldn't just make a bootleg of it because they don't split it on iTunes when they make a double album. They just let it run through. We're talking about Drake and we're talking about More Life. I bought a vinyl copy. This has got all the tracks on it. Nothing's wrong with it. And I'm very happy with it. I will give an update in the future videos as to whether what condition it's in. But it looks like from what I've seen so far that it's pretty good. Okay, moving on. Let me get the record out of the way, excuse me. Moving on. Next, I'm going to go with what's, what's new releases for the week. Give me a second to get them. Okay, this, is not a new, this is not a new release. We'll put this out here. It is, yes, it is. Okay, hold on. Okay, I went to my local Target this week in White Plains, where I used to work, and I got two albums that were Target exclusives. Now, I don't usually buy albums from Target, but I do buy, because I don't like the fact that they cut their, drastically cut their CD selection down. And sometimes when it's on Fridays with new releases, they don't even put them out. They're sitting there in the back of the store and they, we have to ask the employees to put them out. And when they do, no, we can't find them or we can't go back there. No, I'm not very thrilled with that. But they did happen to have two Target exclusives. One that I decided to take a plunge on from last week's new releases. That was my album of the week, Megadeth's The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. If you can't see it very well, but it's got a lenticular cover. It also had two tracks that were not on the original album. This Planet's On Fire, Burn in Hell, and Dystopia Live. Now, I usually don't go for the Target exclusives unless they are have extra content. I'm very particular about getting extra audio content. These DVDs that go along, couldn't care less. Unless the album went to number one, then I want everything that has to do with it. Second album, I'd already bought the regular copy. It's downstairs. I'll probably just, I'll figure something to do with it. But... I bought the um, Target exclusive because it had two extra tracks. I believe the tracks were... Uh, let me get to these. Hold on. Cool and Through the Night. We're talking about John, John Legend and Legend. From what I've heard of it so far, the single called All She Wanna Do, which was performed on Jimmy Fallon, was really good. It's John's... First step away from Columbia Records or Sony Music. He's now on John Legend Music Incorporated under license to <coughs> excuse me, public records. It's a double album as well. Next up is a classical artist. Now, I, I, those who know me do know that I occasionally buy a classical album. 
It's a guy who performed at one of the royal weddings. His name is Shiku Ken Kenna Mason. And the name of the album is Song. It's on the DECA label. And on it is, let me see if anything interesting is on here. Medicine Song Without Words, J.S. Box, Come Sweet Death, J.S. Box, Souvenir of the Nation, Survive or Survive, Savior of the Nations, Come, Hamilton's Crimey River, and Box, uh, Back Racks, I Say a Little Prayer. Looks like a great classical record. Can't wait to dive into that. <laughs> Next up, that hotly anticipated soundtrack from TV. It's been digitally released, but now it's on physical copies available. It sent two old songs back to the Billboard Hot 100 or to the Hot 100 for the first time. Running Up That Hill, Deal With God by Kate Bush and Ride the Lightning by Metallica. We're talking about the soundtrack to Stranger Things 4. Also on the album is um, a Bryce Miller, two remixes of Journeys, Separate Ways Worlds Apart, the Beach Boys 1986 chart record California Dreamin', Talking Heads classic Psycho Killer, Dead or Alive's debut single, He's Spinning Around Like a Record, um, Kiss, Detroit Rock City single version, Musical Use Soul Record, Patch the Dutchie. Safari Soul Record, Wipeout. A single version of Starpoint Solo Top 40 Record, Object of My Desire. Falco's Gold Mix of Rafi Amadeus. Ricky Nelson's Classic Traveling Man. Baltimore's Soul Top 40 Record, Tarzan Boy. Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong doing Dream of Dream of Me. Rick Derringer's Soul Top 40 Record, Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo. James Taylor's Classic Fire and Rain. A classic from Susie and the Banshees, Spellbound. And a Moby song, When It's Cold. I'd Like to Die, featuring Mimi Goose. I don't know if it's new or not. But it looks like a really good soundtrack, so I bought it. Next up, we have the Afghan Wigs. That's Greg Dahl and company. And the name of the album is called... I'm not even trying to pronounce... The name of the album is called... No, oh, not even listed anyone here. New Afghan Wigs. Next up, we have... Let me get to it. The new one from country singer Kane Brown, Different Man. Last time out, Kane uh, went to number one on the album's chart. And this one features Blake Shelton on Different Man. And Kaylin Brown on the new single, Thank God. Also on the album is the singles, Like I Love Country Music, Grand, One Mississippi. Good stuff, Kane Brown. Next up, we have another new uh, a reissue. They've decided to do a 10th anniversary edition of Imagine Dragons' debut album, full-length album, Night Visions. The album has the original album on it, plus a second disc of, I don't even know if these are new songs or what they are, but second disc of stuff on there too as well. Looks really good. There's also a big box set for this. I don't want it. It's too much stuff. Next up, I have Charlie Crockett. I've seen him in concert twice. Doug Panero presents in White Plains, New York. Great, great, great stuff. I have a couple of his albums signed. This is his breakthrough album, and it's in stereo. A few of his older albums are in mono to get the atmosphere right. And it features his first chart single on the Billboard AAA charts called... Let me get the name of this. I'm Just a Clown. It's the man from Waco from the great Charlie Crockett. Charlie's now opening for Willie, uh, Willie Nelson at Central Park. Congratulations, Charlie, and your album is fantastic. I've sampled it already. Okay, and let me see if there's anything else in terms of new releases. These are not new releases, so let's put those to the side. Okay, next up is um, MGK's friend Youngblood and his latest album. Kind of the MGK sound with the rock stuff. Good stuff indeed. Okay, next up, a new album by Rockers. Um, let me get the name. Um, Parkway Drive, Darker Still. I was uh, running through the Billboard Rock Tracks chart, found a track for them on there, and decided to give this album a shot. Next up is an album by Madison Cunningham, highly recommended. The album is um, same thing. I'm doing a run through on Billboard's AAA charts. Found a Madison Cunningham song on there. Decided I wanted it. Next up, I have Katie Tunstall. You may remember Black Horse and the Cherry Tree. Suddenly I see the album is called Nut. Brand new album, Katie Tunstall. I also have. Jackie Ivanko, she's the opera singer, the little kid opera singer that was on America's Got Talent. She does an album. This is not opera. She sings in a regular voice this time, and she sings Joni Mitchell classics on Carousel of Time. Next up is a newcomer. The name is Sudden Archives, Natural 
Remember the album is called, let me get the name of this here. Natural Brown Prom Queen, Sudden Archives. We have Lake Street Dive. Member Aki Burness also performed at Doug Burnett Presents in White Plains. Very good stuff indeed. Lake Street Dive, Fun Machine, the sequel EP on the Fantasy label. Next up, I have Kiss. Now, Kiss has been releasing this series called Off the Soundboard. Most of the albums have been double. Most of the albums have been newer stuff. This one is from the 1977 year. Action November 29th, 1977 in Des Moines, Iowa at the Veterans Memorial Auditorium. And it's the original band. And it's only one disc. What's not to love about that? Kiss. Next up is a combination of jazz artists. Wayne Shorter, Terry Lynn Carrington, Leo Genovese, and Esper and Spalding, live at the Detroit Jazz Festival. Okay, next up we have... Okay, next up we have... Let me get the next one here. Next up we have Julian Lennon. He's John Lennon's son. He did Velat. He did Too Late for Goodbye. He did Say You're Wrong. He did... Um, I don't remember the name of the song. Um, he did other singles. I'm not remembering the name of the last single he did. He's got a new album out called Jude. Good stuff there. And then next we have Freddie Johnson. You remember Bad Reputation? It was a hit in 1995 on the Radio Records chart. Freddie is back with Back on the Road to You. <coughs> and, our, my, and my album of the week before we move on is by the legendary Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy is back with a new album this week with many great guitarists on it. Jeff Beck, Mike McCready of Pearl Jam, Zach Wilde of Black Label Society, and Ozzy's band, Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath, Eric Clapton, um, among others, and it's called Patient Number 9. Excellent, excellent stuff. Some of Ozzy's best work since at least the 90s. Maybe as far back as No More Tears. Okay. Next up is going to be my haul from a record store. Now, as many of you know, I don't go to record stores that often because I can't drive and because of COVID. COVID restrictions have lightened up around me. So I'm now going back to record stores slowly but surely. Once in a while, you'll see me go to a record store. Well, I, went, I hit up a record store in Manhattan called Book Off. It's on 45th Street. Great stuff indeed. If you want cheap albums, you can't go wrong. Dollar fifty albums. Anyway, um, I kind of stuck to the jazz and soundtrack sections. If you see my last video, you've seen all these already, but I'm going to show them again anyway. Um, I didn't find much in the jazz because I only found three titles, but I did find a slew of great soundtracks. We start off with the soundtrack to the Brad Pitt, George Clooney movie, Ocean's 13. And from the first scan through, you get a lot of talking from the movie in here, which kind of distracts. We got the soundtrack to the great movie with Harrison Ford, Sigourney Weaver, and Melanie Griffith. Car Carly Simon's soundtrack to Working Girl. That's the album with Let the River Run that won the Oscar. Carly's last top 100 single as a solo artist. Good stuff. It's on the Arista label. Next up, I have a soundtrack to the great 1991 movie with starring SNL alumnus, alumni excuse me, Billy Crystal called City Slickers. And the reason I got it was because the great James Ingram, one of my favorite vocalists of all time, does the single from the album, Where Does My Heart Go? It's also on his album, The Power of Great Music, the greatest it's album that was released that year. But it's on this soundtrack and I wanted to have it. Mark Shaman's soundtrack is a, lot, is a very fun listen. Next up, a soundtrack of old songs. I don't know much about the movie, but it does have I'm Gonna Be a Wheel Someday by Sheryl Crow. And that's the soundtrack to Fast Track to Nowhere. Also on the album is Iggy Pop, Meat Puppets, Los Lobos, Concrete Blonde, The Neville Brothers, Charlie Sexton, Blues Traveler, Wild Colonials, The Smithereens, and Babes in Toyland. Oh, just hold on a moment. Give me a second. Something fell. Mm -mm -mm. Hold on a moment. I gotcha. Okay, next is a soundtrack to a 1996 movie. I believe it's 96. Let me make sure I'm right on that. Yeah, 96, 1996 movie. Yes. Starring, it was the second movie of the year for John Travolta after Pulp Fiction. We're talking about his father phenomenon, Michael. And the album, I got the album for the song Through, the, um, Through Your Hands, a new track by the Eagle Don Henley. Next up is a soundtrack that I listened to yesterday and really thoroughly enjoyed. And actually, the CD is down in the CD player. Oops, I gotta go down and get it. But the, the, the box is here. That's all you need to see. It's a soundtrack to the 1990, 1988 
actually 87, um, movie um, that got share an Oscar called Moonstruck. A lot of it's scored, but it's got That's Amore. It's got a track by Vicky Carr called Let Me, It Must Be Him. Good stuff indeed. Next up is the soundtrack to the um, movie, movie from Gus Van Zandt, Even Cowgirls Got the Blues by Katie Lang. Next up, we have a soundtrack to the to the um, let me see who directed the soundtrack to the John Hughes version of Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. That's the movie that starred Richard Attenborough, Elizabeth Perkins, Dylan McDermott, J.T. Walsh, James Murmier, Mara, Wil Mara Wilson, and Robert Prosky. Good stuff indeed, and it does feature a classic, Sarah McLaughlin's "Song for Winter Night." Next up, the soundtrack to a nineteen ninety five movie, one I saw in the theater. Uh, Robin Williams is a very funny turn on this movie as a um, doctor. It also features Julianne Moore and Hugh Grant. We're talking about nine months. Next up, the Santa Door TV series, the only one I got. For the 1995 series, starring, uh, I believe it was Golden Globe winner or Emmy winner, one of them. She won a no big award for this, this Claire Danes, My So Called Life. Next up, the soundtrack to the 19. 99 movie starring James Vanderbeek. He also sat in live for this movie. And it was James uh, Varsity Blues. The, uh, the single from the uh, soundtrack was a song already on the uh, already on the latest screen day album, Nice Guys Finished Last. Next up, the soundtrack to the great Whoopi Goldberg movie. I saw this in the theater with my niece. Um, Sister Act. Single from this album was a repurposed CC Music Factory song called Just a Touch of Love Every Day. Okay, next up is the soundtrack to the 1991 classic. I never saw it, but I probably will have to someday. Thelma and Louise, Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis. The single from it is Part of You, Part of Me. The last charting single as a solo artist for Glenn... Actually, no, maybe not the last one. One of the last charting singles for the great Eagle Glenn Fry. We got the soundtrack part two to the great commitments. If you haven't gotten part... If you haven't purchased part one yet, Something to look forward to. If you get the deluxe edition of this Commitment soundtrack, part two is not there in full. So I will bought part two separately. Next up, the soundtrack to the movie One from the Heart. That's by Tom Waits and Crystal Gale. Next up, we have the soundtrack to the 1990 Christian Slater drama, Pump Up the Volume. It's famous for, for having the track Everyone Knows by Concrete Blonde. Great stuff on there. Next up, the soundtrack to the 2000... Comedy with Mel Gibson call and Helen Hunt called What Women Want. It's mostly filled with oldies and classics. Really good stuff there. Next up, the soundtrack to the Barbara Hershey movie, Tune In Tomorrow, done by Winton, the great Wynton Marsalis. We've got the part two to the soundtrack of the Jamie Foxx Academy Award winner, Ray. Have to replace the box, but eh, small price to pay. Now, there's one soundtrack that I had to reorder. It's going to come being shown in a future video. You'll notice on this soundtrack that you got, that's a no-no for me. I have to buy the soundtrack again, regardless of how the disc plays. But we've got the soundtrack to the Oliver Stone Academy Award winner, Platoon. Look out for the proper copy of this album in a future video. And we've got a soundtrack to Usher's first movie, Light It Up. The single from the album, which didn't chart, was Master P, featuring the No Limit All-Stars, and Light It Up. I also got three jazz albums. 1990's Dave Cause by Dave Cause. He does a cover of Richard Marks and the Summer Nights on that, on, that, on that soundtrack. And two albums by Polish singer Basha. Basha's known for singles Time and Tide and Cruising for a Bruising, both of which made the Pop Hot 100 charts in 1988 and 1990, respectively. We're talking about Basha's EP that followed the Cruising for the Bruising album. Or the album that featured Cruising for Bruising called Brave New Hope. <coughs> and we're talking about Basha's um, 1994 album, The Sweetest Illusion. I believe the single Drunk on Love made number one on Billboard's dance chart. Next up, we have a few chart records. Not too many of them, but a few. Mark Cohen charted low on Low on the Hot 100 with a song called Walk Through the World. So I bought Mark Cohen's The Rainy Season. Have a greatest hit for Mark. Have the original album, Mark Cohen, which is fantastic. But not this album yet. So that's been added to my collection. Um, an, 
Evoke Mr. Moranga. 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 Don't know much about him. I don't even know what single it is. It's on, I think it's Mesa, but I'm not positive on that. He charted low on the charts. And with the gold stamp on there, I'm debating whether i got to replace this or not. Okay, um, same thing with Intrigue. Tried twice, got both one, both times, got things with gold stamps. Um, the Poor Boys, their single was called... Let me get the name of the single, hold on. I'm not remembering the name of the single for this album, but the album's called Pardon Me, Poor Boys. And I got to replace the cover to the last one, but it's Canadian country singer Terry Clark. The single was, I believe, was If I Were You, but I'm not sure. Or when boy, Other singles were Boy Meets Girl and Better Things to Do. I love that song, Better Things to Do. It's Terry Clark's self-titled album. Now, finally, I did. I do have the, the bare endings of my CTI Records journey. Now, there were a couple records, maybe up to five or six, that I still have not received yet. But these are some of the ones I received for this week. There were not as many as usual because I'm winding down with that. We start off with an album I had to rebuy again because the, the jewel box was not sent with it. Wes Montgomery's Tequila. If you're lucky to be in White Plains, try um, Ron Black's Jam Night over there at Ron Black's Beer Hall on America Avenue. Gil Paris and his crew do a great version of Tequila, the Wes Montgomery version. Next up, a live album by Gary Mulligan and Chet Baker called The Carnegie Hall Concert. The highlight for me is, is his version of My Funny Valentine. We have Airto again. His last time I need an Airto album. The album's called Fingers. We have Randy Weston. It's the only album I got from Randy. It's called, let me get the name of this here, Blue Moses, Randy Weston. We got two albums by the great Grover Washington Jr. I'm trying to complete it. It's a Motown collection for Grover. First, an original pressing or a pretty early pressing of the 75 release Feels So Good. And a version of the 77 album Live at the Bijou. We also have Hubert Laws, the last of ones I was looking for from him, called the San Francisco Concert from 1977. And finally, Paul Desmond does Simon and Garfunkel. See him out of reach? Well, it happened. He recorded El Corridor Pasa, So Long Frank Lloyd Wright, 59 Bridge Street, Saint, 59 Street Bridge Song, excuse me, Feeling Groovy, Mrs. Robinson, Old Friends, America, Family Wherever I May Find Her, Scarborough Fair, Canical, Cecilia and Bridge of Trouble Water, made an album called Bridge of Trouble Water. Here it is, Paul Desmond. Anyway, that's what I got this week. Join me Friday when you'll see the new releases that are coming out this week, and there'll be a pretty long list. Be, be warned for that. Thanks. If you like this video, subscribe. Hit the like button. Hit the dinghy to get notified. I'm Nick the CD Man. Keep listening to the physical media. Have a great day and keep on listening to that physical media.